Hey gang, what's good? Welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Here we are at Hearthsong still, but we're about to head into uh, the old Celestial Sapling. And I know that's um, not exactly where we're meant to go for, um, well, the main quest at least. And uh, this one apparently travel, travel to the North Weald Wilderness, or North Weld? Never sure how you pronounce that. Um, uh, here we have the, the Grieving Mothers thing. Let's see, we're just doing a quick rundown here. Deliver a missive. Oh, right! Yeah, for the monk! Right, this is... Yeah, okay. I need to deliver the dead monk's missive to members of his order. They should be staying at the Celestial Sapling, an inn located within Twin Elms. Okay, so this is the real inn. For whatever reason, I thought that this was the inn. Um, I guess it's because they were mentioning mentioning it a bit. Oh, and we did the, the level up. Just say the word. Um, Just a quick run through here. Um, on myself, I picked up Shadow Step, which apparently is a modal, and I kind of fucked up here, and I made a mistake, because not only, um, is it a modal, I mean, here I saw, oh yeah, for six seconds, Shadow Step is gonna give me 20% range damage, I can use that to amp up the, uh, Alpha Strike of, uh, an initial volley of attacks, but as it turns out, yeah, it's a modal, and, um, this modal happens to, it looks like, conflict with, uh, Penetrating Shot. One of the only things I don't really like um, about uh, how this, how the leveling up thing works. Well, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of problems with how leveling up works and, and how it uh, sort of obfuscates a lot of information before you go in and get it. But um, once again, this is actually another thing that's going to be fixed or mended in uh, Pillars 2. I've, I've seen... Um, I don't know if you've been paying much attention to the backer updates and stuff like I have, but uh, they have now this big, uh, beautiful... Uh, graphical interface that's really gorgeous it's like a big flowchart well i guess it's like a flowchart like a your old your old classic uh talent tree so to speak and it has like all this little unlocking stuff and gives details on exactly what you're getting and all that it looks really nice <laughs> and uh honestly it's going to be a great improvement over over just like guessing uh saving respecking all that business anyway hey. for edder um let's see what what did we actually pick up for edder i think we picked up um a passive on Edder. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Um, hmm. Yeah, some kind of... <laughs> Good God, I can't even remember. Oh, Jesus. Oh, here we go. It may have been a uh, vigorous defense. No, nope, nope, that's that's definitely not it. Good Lord. Yep, well, we got some, some passive on Edder. That's gonna... <laughs> it's gonna be a good thing. My God, I can't believe I forgot what it was. Oh, oh well. Fuck it. Um, for Durance, he got a regular ass level up, and we were able to master a new spell, and I decided, you know what, we're gonna master the buff-debuff effect, because look at this. I mean, it's so good, isn't it? 20 melee or ranged accuracy and 4 might, and then debuff, uh, enemies for that? For 40 seconds? My god. Durance is gonna be able to cast that every single freaking time. And, uh, I, I don't know if it stacks with this, uh, extra crit, uh, business, but, uh, nonetheless, we're gonna definitely throw this down every single freaking time, because holy cow, that's really good. Uh, Palagina, she got her passive, finally, that's gonna let her, uh, break, uh, the really bad doo-doo crowd control, finally. Oh my goodness, finally Palagina is coming through. Good lord, paladins are just so useful. I mean, you, you gotta figure that in Pillars 2, paladins are probably gonna get a nerf. Because in Pillars 1, my god, you could probably just run an entire group of paladins from different orders. They are so strong. Hi? I can't say it enough. Um, uh, Aloth here, he's got, um, this Wilting Wind thing. That seems fun. It's another AoE dot. Um, I also gave him this, <laughs> this one. He, he throws down a rainbow wall. It doesn't seem that good. Look at, oh look, there's actually colors here right now. It summons a scintillating wall of varied colors that inflicts varied damage and afflictions on enemies passing through it. It's, I don't know how good it's going to be. I'm, I'm always skittish on these wall abilities because the AOE is very small. But it just does so much shit and the other option wasn't nearly as good either. I think it, there was like a melee option in there and uh, something else that, that was just, uh, I don't know. It wasn't doing it for me. But Wilting Wind will probably be uh, our go-to here. Because, uh, you know, we love those big AoE dots when we're not CCing on, uh, Aloth. Shit. <laughs> God, that scared me. They look like giant lions mixed with giant rats, don't they? The Stelger? Anyway, um, for Mama Sad, we got Defensive Mindweb. 
Now, this is the thing that I was talking about earlier that I thought that I had had, but, uh, I don't know, for whatever... Oh, I must have, uh, when I was looking up how exactly a cipher even works, because, I mean, this is a class that's not quite in many other things, at least that I've ever played, um, or, or seen or ever heard about. So I looked it up, and, and this was one of the abilities that, uh, looked really good, um, naturally, as you would expect from a rank 7, which I think 7 is the highest... Anyway, um... Basically, um, what this will do is make all of our um, defensive um, stats the same as whoever has the highest. So essentially, we're all going to have Edder stats, which is mind-boggling. That is just insane. Like, we don't even need... I mean, we need Edder as a tank to, to have what high stats for that to work, but... Otherwise, he doesn't need to hold aggro, which is a good thing because aggro is kind of uh, sometimes a fucking mess when, when you don't have a, a proper choke point. All right, let's head on over here to this. Oh, look, Renato or something. Mel, that Glanfaden witch sold. Oh, jeez, they're going too quick. Sold me useless twigs and herbs. Does she take me for a fool? This will not stand. I've been swindled. And Allah, he will pay for what she did. Oh my gosh, they have an ogre here named Rotuk. Just say the okay. word. Oh look, we can examine the top of this pine tree. Look, man, pine trees out here? We're getting already in the seasonal mood. Oh, no, wait. The water is cool and crisp. Okay, so it's not the pine tree at all. Oh look, we can talk to this dear wooden noble, perhaps. That ogre keeps looking at me like I urinated on some ruins. Did you? All right, Renato, what do you have to say? She'll pay that witch! She'll... Fuming with anger and pacing in tiny circles, the Valian merchant aims his wild rant at you as you approach. You there! Have you come here to trade with the savages? Learn from my example and take your business elsewhere. Spittle accents his every sentence. Liars, cheats, swindlers! That duplicitous bitch, Ali, uh, Allahi. She claimed to be selling a lot golab flower buds, but all I have now is six bushels of common house plants. The herbs are useless. He throws a handful of dried plants to the ground, stomping on the brittle stems and leaves, kicking up pungent, savory scents. I'll get my money back from that swindling savage! Uh, what do you intend to do about this? When I get my hands on... Renato halts his sentence, his eyes darting about at the nearby Glanfathen guards. I'm in the savage's home court, so it's my word against hers. Where does that leave me? I'd be a fool to threaten her here. God, what is his accent? He's, he sounds like a fucking Nord, doesn't he? From the old Elder, Elder Scrolls land. <laughs> On tribal soil. Doesn't sound Italian at all. He sighs, pressing on his temples. I cannot sell this worthless herb to recover my coin. And I am powerless to confront Alari. I don't suppose... God, he really sounds like a Nord. Oh my god. I need to reconfigure that. Jesus Christ, this is, this is why voice directors exist, huh? <laughs> he looks at you, sizing you up. If you were willing to meditate, perhaps you could succeed where I failed. I would, of course, pay you handsomely for your troubles. Um, I'll see what I can do. Alright, yeah. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. We'll see. Can we actually trade with him, though? Hail and well met. Oh, man, he doesn't have an accent at all. <laughs> Even though he's a uh, Valian. All right, fair enough. How very uh, judgmental of me. Shame on me. Renato smiles broadly and throws his arms in the air at your arrival. My friend, welcome back. Have you recovered my coin? No, not yet. Let me just see what you got. Oh, oh okay. Renato looks away from you, scratching his neck. And shifting his feet. I am destitute and have but a few meager offerings left to sell. How dreadfully embarrassing. If I can recover my investment from Allahi, I'll have funds to resupply my stores. 
Until then, you are welcome to take a look at what I still have in stock. Oh, look, we can actually... Yeah, he does actually have some... Uh, he's right, it is It is a lot of garbage. Whew! Everywhere I look, I see some tribesmen giving me the stink guy. They sure are a... Oh, where, where'd it go? They sure are... Meh, whatever, they sure are a bunch of bastards or something. Just say the word. Lost it to the annals of time. Oh, look at this, it looks like a uh, sand dollar or whatever, doesn't it? The Celestial sa Sapling. Okay. Can we actually come up over here and investigate anything? My thoughts will Maybe be we should go into sneaky mode. Feet. No? Okay. Well, before we go up in there, I want to talk to this ogre. Can we talk to this ogre? Oh, look, there's a friend. There's an ogre friend here as well. Protector. Alright. Oh, this ogre! Look at this! Alright, the celestial sapling is literally a gigantic tree, I'm guessing. And this is some kind of cool-ass lift. But for whatever reason, they built it to where... Regular people, regular kith, or folk? I, I forget which is which. Um, cannot m operate it. You have to have an ogre to operate it. Which uh, seems like a, a poor planning, honestly. <laughs> Alright, Rotuk. You want up? I pull. Ready when you All are. Alright. Rotuk. I want up. Send me up. I want, I wish to ascend. To the stars, the celestial staircase of a good time. Oh my goodness. Maybe this is where the celestial pig came from. Remember that all the way from the very beginning? The backer pet or whatever? Or not the backer pet, but like some sort of bonus pet that we get started out with. Man, there's another ogre up here. Yeah. I guess uh, it takes two to tango, huh? Alright, let's see. What have we got here? What is this? I can't, I can't even not examine this. Yeah, look at that. I'm trying to click on it. You can see my little cursor finger wiggling. Oh, well. We'll never know. It's probably... Oh, I could imagine it saying, It's just a bunch of leaves. <laughs> Ready when you are. Alright. Gosh, look. Yeah, this is where a bunch of people have uh, taken refuge. That ogre... Okay, yeah, we've heard that one before. Oh, look at that. Huh. Could buy passage to the Republics, maybe. What? Frightened villager. This man looks up sharply as you approach, eyes going wide. You! You're the one! The one he's looking for! He sets down his wine. You killed Lord Raedric! Oh shit, I did! Oh my gosh, it's come back to haunt us finally! What if I did? How dare you accuse me of something so heinous! Keep it down, idiot. Um... Yeah. Keep it down, you idiot. Keep it down. No, no, you don't understand. It didn't work. It... I'm one of the guards at the keep. Was one of the guards. He's killed most of them. The ones you didn't. What? Is he talking about... Is... Oh my god. You know, I almost completely forgot about all the whole Raedric shit. But has my prediction at last come true? Remember, um, his, like, god, who was it? His cousin, brother, nephew, some, some relative of Raedric, after we killed him, he took his place. And then we made that prediction there. On that fateful day, we said, oh, this guy seems shifty as hell. He's definitely gonna take over and be a major asshole, probably even worse than, uh, this asshole that we just killed. This poor town just can't catch a break. From one asshole to another. Kolsch. Oh my gosh, no, Kolsch died too? Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm ringing ahead too much. Kolsch. He didn't last very long. Nothing but empty air, him. Nice enough to work for. I mean, much nicer. But that didn't help him when Raedric came back. Gods, the screaming... What the fuck? He came back from the dead! Alright. Alright, in my defense, how the hell could I, could I have predicted that? Granted, they were worshipping some, like, god of death or something there. So maybe that's, you know. If we had known whoever uh, it was that they were hanging out with all over there. His eyes. It was like he was burning inside. He shudders. He says he's come back to lead us. Like before. 
says he's going to kill you for what you've done. I told him I'd find you, give you his challenge, do it all honorable, that sort of thing. He let me go, and I kept on running as far as my coin led me. He laughs bleakly. <laughs> Funny, me running into you anyhow. Then perhaps I should seek him out. He's going to have to wait. I have more important things to do. I suppose you have some kind of trap waiting for me back there? You mean I have a chance to kill him again? How could I refuse? <laughs> I like that one. And what's your stake in all this? Yeah, sure. What an asshole. I'm excited to kill him again. What an absolute asshole. That Raedric? Sure. It won't be like last time, I think. He's not human. I mean, not mortal anymore. It's like he just up and refused to stay dead. I've never seen anything like it. Hope I never see anything like that again. In fact, I'm staying put here and drinking until I don't remember a thing. I wish you all the luck in the world, friend. There's something awful in that keep. Howling after your blood. Oh shit, I like that. Oh my gosh. Oh, Barath, the champion of Barath. Oh my goodness. Having slain Lord Raedric, I thought Gilded Vale freed from his influence. But it seems that something stirs in the Grape Keep, Great Keep yet. This may be the work of a new usurper after the throne, or mere superstition. Either way, it may be worth investigating. Oh, so we, we're doubtful of um, the reality of the situation. Well, now, return to Raedric's hold and find your challenger. While in the Celestial Sapling in Twin Elms, I encounter a former guard from Gilded Vale. He claims that Lord Raedric himself has returned to his keep, despite his having died at my hand. Apparently, Raedric seeks vengeance upon me for having ended his life and has issued a challenge. It may be worth investigating in any case. Alright, what if he didn't come back as a zombie? Ready when it's really you are. just some sort of wild-ass conspiracy. I don't know, that'd be pretty interesting as well. Man, I'm excited to go back there for that. The unusual stone pulses with warmth. Tribeswoman, here we go. Oh, Camille. Oh, no, wait, that's a that's a backer NPC. Almost caught me off guard because of the uh, the background here. Valian woman and a deer wooden. You know what isn't hidden in those Ingwithen ruins? Proper drink recipes. Oh! Alright, Valian man. Do have anyone else? Not in this room. Well, this this big-ass ogre. Can we talk to this ogre? Estramore, welcome. Behave. Be merry. Oh, Ogres are peaceful here. I'm, I'm into it. Man, maybe we shouldn't have killed that gigantic cave full of ogres. Good day, stranger. Eletherian Haggard Shoes. A middle-aged elven man stands behind the counter of the inn. He has a warm, open face and smiles pleasantly in greeting as you approach. Welcome, welcome. I am always glad to see a new face. Take a seat where you like, my friend. It seems you've walked a long road. All are welcome here, and those with interesting stories most welcome of all. Oh, huh. man, everyone here is so friendly. This tree is definitely going to get burned down, huh? <laughs> nah, not, not when there's a quest NPC there. They wouldn't burn it down. Can I see what you have for sale? Um, Who are you? Yeah, who are you? My name is Eletherian. They call me Haggard Shoes for all the walking I used to do, and all the boots I wore down. But those days are well behind me. My eyes have seen a great deal, and now my ears get their fill from the travelers who come through here. I am always glad to see a new face. Take a seat where you like, my friend. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, tell me about this place. Of course, Eletherian's face brightens. I founded the inn many years ago, but in many ways its tale begins much earlier. It was while I was returning from a long journey south that I first heard the story of the tree upon which this inn rests. Hundreds of years ago, a strange event occurred. The sky was troubled that night, with many stars falling across the sky. And one of those same stars began to plummet 
instead towards Yora. It fell here, striking a young tree and burying itself within it like a fiery heart. But the tree survived, and over the years it grew and grew and grew twice as big as its fellows in half the time, until it reached the size you see now, and grew no more. Hearing the tale, I knew I must find the truth, and you see it there. He gestures toward the large stone at the center of the room. Oh shit, is that the meteor or whatever? Around the tree's heart, I built this inn, to welcome all travelers who might look upon it. I mean... That's a really nice thing that you've done. I mean, your intentions are good, but... <laughs> that seems pretty dangerous to just build an inn around this thing. And also, I don't know, maybe you should preserve it? I don't know. I feel like you've taken a lot of unnecessary risks here. Why not just build the inn next to the tree? I'm always glad to see a new face. Take a seat where you like, my fr Oh, gosh. That keeps getting me every time. All right, let's see what he has for sale, if he has anything. Of course, we offer meals and some supplies. Have a look. Spirit Spiral? What is this? Oh, gloves. Huh. 5% melee damage. That's really not worth it, though. Especially when we have accuracy gloves. Whispers of Treason. Oh, shit. Three per rest charm. Huh. If we didn't already have Mama Sad, that might be worth considering. But, uh... She's really got that whole, uh, charm situation on lockdown. These bracers are made from a coiled stripe of bronze. Or a strip of bronze, Jesus. Though tarnished and beaten almost beyond usefulness, they glow with a soft violet light. Of the many experiments of the ancient Ingwithin, some involved infusing equipment with soul essence. The hammered patterns on, patterns on these bracers suggest that they were originally pieces of animat armor. But, among the fragments of essence swirling inside, you detect not only the focused energy of an animat, but also the essence of the elven cipher who created the bracers, and tried to enhance them with a fragment of his own soul. Wow! Jeez. Tough break. Alright. Ready when you are. I wonder what the hell this guy's doing with it. That seems like something you'd find in the marketplace. Alright. Let's see. Well, who is, uh... Oh, this is... Have a moment. I would like a word with you. Okay. Let's quick save here, just in case this is actually some sort of, like, robber. I don't know. Welcome. Oh, it's a lady. Um, a slender woman in dusty leathers locks eyes with you. It's good to see someone from more civilized lands around here. Her unkempt hair sprouts in wavy black tufts. Despite the fine features that sculpt her face, a cleft chin completes her boyish appearance. I'm learning firsthand the many shortcomings of Glanfathen hospitality. Her gloved hands come to rest on the pommel of a long estoc, cinched low on her hip. I can almost forgive the hostility toward outsiders, but the temperate taverns and these watered-down drinks? Inexcusable. I hope I don't seem too forward, but I've heard of you. A sly smile carves a dimple on her cheek. You're famed among the dozens, and that makes us allies. She gives you a, a coquettish? A sideways glance? And allies? Well, they help each other, do they not? Huh. Maybe she's... N hmm. I don't know if, if she is an ally. Seems pretty suspicious. Um, who are you? The woman pats the dust off her leggings and gives you an exaggerated curtsy. Where did I leave my ambassadorial manners? She flashes a mocking smile. I am Sw... Chwi Sw Quinneth? Jesus, pleasure to meet you. She lifts an eyebrow with a blushing smirk. For the time being, though, I'm just another Estramore minding her own business. Uh, what help do you need? My friends have drawn some unwanted attention. 
Quineth? Good lord, how do you... Twineth? Qui... We're, we're, gonna, we're going with Twineth, right? It's, it's a weird pillars pronunciation, huh? The CW there? Not to be confused with the television station? Good lord. Twineth? Yeah. Qu Pfft, fuck, it is really... <laughs> what a name! Twineth looks to both sides, scanning for uninvited listeners. Glanfathen scouts. And not just any mob of local zealots. The Fangs. She pauses to let the name settle in, in the air. The Fangs are a brutal, relentless bunch, eager to make an example of troublesome outsiders. As for why I need your help, her smile widens as she speaks. I need someone to warn the expedition that trouble is coming, and I need someone ready to fight if it comes to that. She taps her hand on the pommel of her stock. With any luck, we'll reach my friends before the Fangs do. But if not, the Fangs have a reputation to uphold, so this might require spilling blood. Oh, jeez. I mean, alright, I'm sold on, on believing you now. Um, why aren't you with the rest of your friends? Why not warn them yourself? Her posture stiffens at the question. Oh, shit. Should I believe her now? This has me in doubt now. That little bit there. It was my turn to handle Far Patrol. I spotted the fangs on my trek back to camp. I knew that rejoining the main group would risk leading the enemy right back to the expedition. I know the woods, and I know how to stay quiet. But I didn't want to stake my friends' lives on my ability to sneak past expert hunters like the fangs. If they noticed me warning my friends... We'd have been overrun. Twineth tilts her head to the side and points to you with a grin. Yeah, she's grinning so much. It is very suspicious. Um, but if they notice me and some reinforcements, like, say, you, well, at least then we can scare them off. Or put up a good fight. What did your friends do to draw the attention of the fangs? Just setting foot in Air Glanfath is a good way to offend the tribes. I don't know how they picked up our trail. I suspect one of our newer scouts didn't cover his tracks very well enough. Well enough. When I spotted the fangs, they were retracing a path the expedition had taken days before. All right, tell me about your expedition. I like to think we're on a mission of reclamation. Twineth darts a shrewd smile. It is said that our armies left behind many valuables in their hasty retreat from Air Glanfath at the end of the War of Black Trees. So, the way I see it, we're simply gathering up what our ancestors left behind. I doubt the Glanfathans agree with me on this, she adds with a dimpled grin. Okay. She- alright, I'm back to, to believing her. She's just mischievous, is, is with all the grinning. My expedition set out from Defiance Bay, heading directly east to cross into the into Glanfathen lands. I split off once we arrived at the Bale, the natural frontier between our nations. The plan was for me to keep my eyes on the Glanfathens while the main group scoured the target area. For days we eluded them. She walks her fingers over the back of her leather glove, leaving a trail in its on its dusty surface. But the fangs got wise to our presence. Your friends are trespassing. By local custom, they're criminals. I mean, that's true. And I'm, I think I'm about ready to help some criminals again. I'm down for it. Um, if, if we say this, though, is that being too accusatory? Let's just say that we'll help her. I'll help you warn the expedition. Schwinnett smiles with an overt display of dimples. Jeez, why, they're going heavy on the dimples here, huh? Excellent! I knew I could count on you. She leans in and whispers. Assuming the fangs didn't already get them, my friend should be now, should now be at or around the Pilgrim's Trail in the North Weald. The plan was to camp along a trail leading to a Temple of Helia. Find my comrades, warn them the fangs are coming, and 
help them clear out of the forest. I'll head out first on my own to see if I can't lead the fangs astray and buy us some time. She pulls her estoc a few inches out of its scabbard and cracks a smile. If the gods smile on us, we won't have to draw steel. Should it come to that? I'm glad you're on our side. Huh. At the mercy of the tribes. Okay. It, that, that makes it seem like it's going to be a hostage say the situation. Alright, let's see. Who all is in here? Oh, this... This isn't a backer NPC. Look, this is... A dot, dot, dot. Okay. Very suspicious. What's this say? The bed rocks with the gentle swaying of the tree. Ready when you hmm. are. That would be relaxing if it also weren't so concerning at the same time. Alright, what is this? The unusual stone pulses with warmth. Oh, that must, yeah, that's the rock they was talking about. I thought it was behind him, like, right here. But no, that's the, uh, the heart of it, or whatever the hell. That seems like it'll definitely be very, very important. Alright, let's see, what's on up here? Oh, shit. Oh, these are the monks! Of course! Sorry, monks. Your friend has... is no more. Let's see, let's, um... Champion of Barath. Hunter, brother... No. Where is it? Hard bargain? The sealed missive. Oh, right! Yeah, let's get a refresher on what it said in there. I have read the missive the monk carried. Here is what it said. Rejoice, Seeker. The judicious application of pain has loosened the tongue of our informant. The artifact we seek has, seek has recently been moved to Elm's Reach. It should be secured in a residence near the entrance of that of the settlement. The informant... Oh, remember that? There was that one that we needed a key for? The informant suggested it is likely stashed away under the floor. We have endured much in our pursuit of this hallowed relic. Soon, our efforts will come to fruition. The Council of... Arch Martyrs awaits your triumphant return. Do not fail us. Alright. Maybe we can just get the key off of them. Let's see, what does this say? Oh, same thing. Alright. Let's quick save here again. Probably have some sort of dialogue. We might be able to trick them into getting the key, or maybe we can just do a dexterity check Hail or something. And well met. The monk massages his temples, his face buried in his palm. As you approach, he looks up. This room needs a proper door, he mutters. My brothers and I rented this space that we may have some measure of privacy in this foreign land. Perhaps you could find another room here in the inn? Who are you? Briefly opening his mouth to answer, the monk swallows his words. He looks you up and down, carefully choosing his response. My brothers and I were having a private discussion in a room we rented for our use. Please, there is a tavern full of people who would provide you with the banter you seek. What brings your order to this place? We travel where the teachings take us, the monk mutters, his voice slow and measured. Not that it is any of your business. I met another monk in robes like you, like your own. He died of his wounds right as I found him. The monk's eyes widen, his fists curl in a crackling bar barrage of popping joints. Jeez, man, he's going wild. Robes like ours, you say. Was he carrying anything? Did he tell you anything? Hand you anything? Please, we've been waiting for another of our order to meet us here. And if you found him... All eyes fall to the floor as the monks begin to whisper chants in unison to their fallen friend. Show him the message. He gave me this missive. I don't remember. Lie. He, ge he said nothing and gave me nothing. All right, show him the message. Hand me that! The monk exclaims as he snatches the missive from your grasp. Almost immediately, his face turns red. I mean, please... This is of great importance. Breaking the seals, the monk unrolls the handwritten scroll contained within and quickly reads the message, his lips breathlessly mouthing the text. He turns to his brothers. My brethren, the arch-martyr has sent word, 
At long last, we now have what we need. Thank you, stranger, the monk says, folding his hands in front of him as he bows deeply. Your honest soul is to be applauded. I admit I was surprised when you handed me the message. I expected the seals to be broken. <laughs> yeah, about that. The monk turns red, his face smiling for the first time. I'm glad to see common decency is not yet lost from this world. Oh, <laughs> he reaches into the folds of his robes. Here, your honesty must be rewarded. Oh, yes. What did we get? Oh, Alia Braccia added to inventory. Did that say task complete as well? Yeah, there we go. All right. What are these uh, Alia Braccia? Is this it? Oh, it's a small shield. Wow, he had a small shield in the folds of his robe? What the hell? Alright. A uh, small shield. 8 deflection. Uh, plus 4 shield deflection. Ranged grazes reflected back at attacker. Not that great. This small shield is of lightweight construction, intended to be maneuvered in as swift and dynamic a fashion as its namesake. Despite the fine craftsmanship, it was most famously known as the weapon of a pit fighter who used a shield and a distinctive dance-like fighting style to turn his opponent's attacks against them. Alright, fair enough. Yeah? Okay. Well, I think that's everything up here. Yeah, it's a pretty small map. Alright, let's head on out to, um, the next area. Let's see. Jeez, when should we go back for, uh, old what's-his-name? Hmm... Oh, we should probably talk to Alarhi back at the market, right? And, uh, at least see what's up with that. Yeah, we should definitely do that before we head out to, uh, like a combat area. And look for, uh, Thaos. Theos. Do you think we should... Hmm. Do you think we should head back to, um, the fort before we go to, uh, check in on Theos? I don't know. Nah, there'll, there'll be a lull in action. Like, we'll have to return back to the town, and we'll have an opportunity, I'd imagine. Especially since I'm assuming we'll return to Defiance Bay. Ready when you are. We can, uh, definitely save it for, uh, that moment. Alright, all the way up here at the market. Goodness, we should have come down here to the Celestial Sapling first. Huh? I wonder what, uh... What all these buildings smell like with all these, uh, sort of sod roofings with, uh, either the leafy fronds, or maybe, maybe it's just, like, grass growing on top of them. Like some sort of hobbit situation, huh? Temper your lust for copper, or you're no better than them. Ha! It's not poverty, I fear, but Tamra's anger. Huh. Alright. Let's come in here and see what's up. Maybe he was um, just an idiot and, like, sold it to her and is trying to get it back and wants me to uh, get into some big-time trouble with uh, this vendor. We'll see. All right, where are you? There's Tamra. Where is... Huh? Where is Alarhi? Was she with, um... Hmm... Let's see, hard bargain. Alarhi has left the Hearthsong's market, perhaps having learned that Renato enlisted me to pursue the Alard Gola. I should find out where the herbalist has gone. Okay. A young girl looks at the market with a disinterested gaze. As you near, she snaps to attention and straightens her posture. Welcome, Mr. Moore, she says with a curtsy. Alarhi's not here, so I'm running the shop while she's away. She glides her hands in front of the display cases of poultices and remedies. If you are looking for herbs, tincture, tinctures, oils, or ointments, then I've got everything you'll ever need. I'm looking for Alarhi. Where might I find her? She lives not far from here. The little girl points at the exit out of the market. Climb up the stairs. At the top... There's a circle of ruins. Do you know it? It's on the north side of Hearthsong. Anyway, her house is right there. The door faces those ruins. Okay. Yeah? 
Sure. Her house is right there. Climb the stairs. At the top, there's a circle of ruins. Do you know it? It's on the north side of Hearthstone. Okay. Yeah, it's that one with the, uh, like, sundial or whatever the heck. Right? And her her door faces what? The, um... The market? Did she say? Eh, it'll be in our little log down there. Our conversation log. Alright. The door faces those ruins. Okay. Um... Well, there's two houses here. Circle of Ruins, it's on the north side. I mean, they're both on the north side. Let's see, which one have we gone into? I can't even remember. Let's try this one. Because both of these doors face the ruins, right? Let's see. Alari, are you up in here? I mean, I I'd guess that even if she were... If this were her home, Alari's not going to be home. <laughs> we might find some sort of note or clue to uh, the rest of... Uh... Okay, Just this say is the Lindsay. word. Many blessings, traveler. Yeah, okay. You're not hiding anyone, are you? Just say the word. Okay, let's check the other house. But yeah, there might be some sort of clue to that leads us out into the wilderness. And we'll find her body, like, dead by a bunch of bears or, like, Stelgers or something weird. And then we'll have to fight these bears that are trying to use this guy's uh, item. Oh my gosh. Ready when you are. Since we had to fight a bear, huh? Speaking of bears, bear companion right there. Alright, knock knock. I'm coming in. Good lord, look out. I'm an RPG protagonist. I just walk into people's houses and they don't seem to mind. You know how it is. Oh shit, Alarhi's got a crew. Alright, let's quick save here. Uh, we are definitely gonna fight these people. Look, they're armed and dangerous. Glonfathen Mind Hunter? First Blade, First Blade, Warrior, and Alarhi. Alright. Alarhi stands tall and proud, surrounded by Glonfathen warriors that study your every move. I expected Renato to employ someone on his behalf. I'm surprised to see that it is you doing his bidding. She tilts her head to the side and blinks slowly. Does the presence of my armed entourage concern you? You were expecting a defenseless shopkeeper, am I right? Alarhi raises her dye-stained hand just as one of her guards begins to lurch forward. Stillness, she barks at her attendant. Give the Estramore a chance to speak. We are not dear wooden beasts. Here, hospitality reigns. Huh. Alarhi nods to you, holding up an open hand, her palm and fingers covered in blue and green dye. Envoy of the Valian, speak the message you were sent to deliver. I'm here for Renato's money. I want to hear your side of the story. I don't care about the Valiant. Maybe I can help you instead. Uh, yeah, let's hear your side of the story. The first step of any sensible path, she muses, scratching her chin. Renato did purchase for me several bushels of Elard Gola, and for it he paid a high price, but did so willingly, saying it was a bargain right as he handed me his copper. It was after our trade that the Valiant spit his venom. Alari's voice grows angry. Renato accused me of trickery, of fraud, claiming I delivered withered likenesses of El Elard Gola and not the genuine root. Such nerve! For in truth, he is beyond the help of Elard Gola. She holds a blue dyed finger in the air before curling it around slowly, smiling as she does. Renato's old bow is infirm enough for a full draw. No amount of Elard Gola will give him the spear of a young hunter. Wow! It's like some kind of Viagra. <laughs> okay. A fair deal was made, and now Renato objects, angry that his withered family plow 
is beyond herbal remedies. She shakes her head, her voice becoming a growl. I have never sold anyone a remedy I knew to be false. If Renato does not silence his slanderous tongue, we will do it for him. Um, wow. What kind of punishment do you have in mind for Renato? Renato has slandered his host, making him no longer a guest. The merchant must vanish from the Twin Elves. She crosses her arms under the sleeves of her robe. But Glanfather and hospitality must be observed always. He is to be given a chance to leave on his on his feet before he bleeds on his back. Deliver, in our name, a warning. Tell Renato that if he does not leave, he will be accused of conspiring to pilfer and Gwithin relics from our lands. He won't risk a trial by the Council of Anamfatha. Alarhi draws a small wooden cage from the folds of her robe. If he won't listen, tell him that his faulty member will end in a cage, just like this black beetle. Food for our birds! Oh, God! Okay. Oh, if we were positive with Twin Elms, we would have a, an additional response here. Huh. So if we had saved this quest for later and come back. Okay. I guess I'll deliver the message, yeah? It sounds like Renato might be a shit-eater. Alarhi nods at you. Return to me when the Valian has disappeared from Twin Elms. Okay, convince Renato to leave Just say Twin the Elms. words. Jeez, what a weird-ass quest. This guy's just trying to get a freaking boner, I guess. <laughs> but his, his old wing-wang is too much in a sorry state of decrepitness that... Even the magic dust of an ancient herbalist. Gosh, yeah, he traveled far and wide from us from the Valian Republics, perhaps, just to get some Viagra. Ready when you what? are. What? What a maniac! All right, he was out this way, right? Man, old Renato. What a what a weirdo. Maybe we can get some of that stuff. <laughs> All right. Renato, what are you doing? You shit eater. Quick saving. Hail, traveler. Renato smiles broadly and throws his arms in the air at your arrival. My friend, welcome back. Have you recovered my coin? Lie. How do you think the Glanfathans will react if they find out you're dealing in stolen relics? Alarhi gave me this beetle in a cage for you. She said your problem would end in the same place if you continue your stay in Twin Elms. Uh, okay. Let, let's tell him this about the beetle. Renato's face turns bright at the sight of the gift. Insufferable witch! She can shove that beetle in her fetid mating hole! Oh my god! Gesticulating with every word, spit flies from Renato's mouth as his voice grows louder. Her and her face-painting thugs will pay for this insult. Jeez, a little casual racism there, Renato. He reaches out to strike the cage from your hands. Oh, looks too quick. Quickly grab Renato's hand before it strikes. Yeah, you better not. Don't fuck around, Renato. Look at this, I'm super dexterous. You reach out with blinding speed, catching Renato's hand mid-flight, stopping his blow before it strikes. He tries in vain to free himself from your grasp. Maricho! The Valian merchant shouts at the top of his lungs. Savage, filthy animals! This damned city will burn! You hear a whistling sound from nearby. I'll kill you! Renato's voice gurgles mid-sentence. The tip of an arrow, gleaming red, protrudes from his throat. Holy shit! The merchant quivers in a quick spasm, flailing his arms. He drops to his knees, spurts of blood flowing down his chest. You look up and notice a Glenfathen archer approaching the scene. Holy shit, they iced him! Glanfather and Huntress. It's not our custom to tolerate squabbles between Estramorwen. 
The huntress begins to turn around, but her face lingers in your direction. The faint semblance of a smile crosses her lips. I'm sure you understand. Wow! Before you can reply, she walks away, moving with confident strides. Renato's arms twitch a final spasm as the merchant expires in a bloody, crumpled heap. Holy shit, they just killed him! All he wanted was some boner powder, and sure, he was a complete dick about getting his dick juice, but... Wow! Killing him? That seems a bit extreme. Alright. Yeah. Well, holy cow. I guess when next we come back... Not a problem. We will head on over to turn this wild-ass quest in at the Hearthsong Market, and maybe we'll confront old what's her butt. Maybe we'll just end up killing her, too. Just being like, did you send that freaking Huntress over here to kill him? I mean, that was pretty... That, it was He was being a major dick, but you didn't have to kill him for that. Jesus. And then after that, um, I guess we'll head out along um, one of these other districts. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll start out at uh, Elm's Reach District. I don't know. We'll just go in like a counterclockwise fashion. Why not? Anyway, till next time, peace. Peace.